Good evening and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Sonic Blue. Well, the reason why I'm saying good evening and not good afternoon or I should say good night, but that's like a closing. So good evening. It is evening. It is actually the morning now. It's five 5.20 in the morning now, and we are getting prepared for tonight's dinner. Why do you ask? Well, because we have to do what is called marinating, and today we are going to be making and marinating chicken teriyaki. i got my teriyaki sauce right here. The only problem with this marinade stuff is you can't just flavor it with teriyaki sauce alone. Like many other dishes, you have to add extra ingredients to make it yours, and I have added the following ingredients to make this dish my own creation. It's teriyaki sauce, chicken breast, marinated in teriyaki with a few cloves of garlic, and then marinated overnight or at a minimum of three hours, but overnight would be a lot better. Then when you uh, are ready to cook your meal, uh, then you get out uh, some truffle oil, some marsala wine, uh, some sweet soy, a uh, little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of uh, well, I'll, I'll show you the ingredients when we're ready to get to that point. There's going to be a lot of ingredients in this. And some of them may be a little bit on the pricey side, but it's worth it. So let's break open our chicken breast. And we are going to first need to uh, mm, tenderize our chicken breasts. The reason why we do that is to allow the flavor to... It was so much easier with a hammer. I just have this roller, which doesn't work very well on th thick meats. But roll it a few times, get those holes going. I'll have to remind myself to get a actual hammer instead of the roller because the hammer does work a lot better and besides I got the roller for $1.99 <laughs> at the store so it was cheap enough I decided well yeah I need one of these so I might as well pick it up while I got the chance right so and look at that the holes closed back up again that's why I need the hammer kind Unless I can do like that, use this in the place of a hammer, that I can do. Okay, so once you got it tenderized, drop it right into the bowl. Grab your other one, do the same thing. Okay, so since we got that size of a bowl, what we're going to do is gonna lay down half of the jar of teriyaki sauce. So we can get in between there and make sure it coats it really good. And then we'll add our garlic. I might actually need two of these. Mm, it smells like teriyaki to me, folks. Teriyaki sauce has a very strong aroma. So once you pop it, pop open that jar and you smell that teriyaki, just think that's what your meats are gonna taste like, but multiply that by 10 on the delicious scale. And that's what you'll get with tonight's meal. As it is gonna be so gosh darn delicious, you'll wanna make this again and again and again. Sauce. We should be fine with one jar though. 
Make sure it's completely covered as much as you can get. And if it doesn't 100% cover it, that's okay. That's pretty much it right there. Okay, so that's the end of that bottle. Now, our next step in the marinating process is to add our garlic cloves. I'm gonna add some minced garlic to this. So let's add, that's two cloves of garlic right there. I'm gonna add three cloves worth of garlic. Three to four cloves would be just fine. I'm gonna get them to spread a little bit. extra is fine if you want to add a little extra just gonna get a more spread on it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but but adding the garlic in you will ensure that that garlic will kind of permeate through the uh, sauce when you marinate it so you'll get this nice mixture of garlic and teriyaki marinade now we're gonna cover with plastic wrap. Okay, we're going to cover this as tightly as possible, although sometimes plastic wrap doesn't like to cooperate, but I'll make it cooperate. There we go. And now we are ready for the refrigerator, and we will see this thing again in at least 24 hours or at the most 24 hours. You really don't need to marinate it for that long, but I say, let's go all the way. Now that's what Sly Fox once said, let's go all the way. It's a great song. Anyway, we're gonna leave that in the refrigerator for about 24 hours in the refrigerator to marinate it. Now we can put all of our stuff away. And then when the time comes to proceed, we will proceed. This thing. Yeah, I think I need to invest in a mallet. What do you think, folks? Yes, yes. And, and, and if you can if you can put a little bit of a, a hoisin sauce on that, that would be great. Okay, Chessy. Doi Pachi. Sorry, I was making a call to the Chinese restaurant. Um, actually, we're just working with zucchini today. It's not really a phone. Anyway, we are going to make Chinese food ourselves tonight. We're not going to order takeout, but it's going to be just as good as takeout or maybe even better than takeout. But you make the call on that one, and you be the judge on that. I'm going to show you the way, and maybe you can make up your own recipe as you go along, or maybe use some of these ingredients or none of these ingredients, or come up with your own mix of ingredients. That's the beauty part of this dish. So I'm going to show you what really, really tastes awesome to me, <clears throat> and you can leave out some of these ingredients, all of the ingredients, or none of the ingredients and just go along with what we're doing, which is probably the best way. So try it along with us as we show you how to make chicken teriyaki uh, and um, um, then we'll see if, you, if it's something you like, then if it's something you don't like, then you can always change up the recipe and add or subtract whatever you want. Now, let's get started. Remember last night we marinated all this chicken? Well, uh, we actually got some more company in today, and we decided to buy another package of chicken just in case the chicken that we bought didn't go around completely. So, now that we have somebody extra for dinner, we got some extra chicken that's in the marinating bowl. And the whole breasts are sitting pretty in that marinade sauce. We're also going to be making chow mein. Chow mein is consisted of noodles and vegetables, or meats, or meat and vegetable. And anything can go into a chow mein. I'll show you the base of the noodles. We have a spaghetti squash, three zucchinis, and celery. And that's all going to go into our vegetable chow mein. Okay, there's a piece of plastic there. One second, one second, one second. There we go. Okay, so now let's do this. Ah, nothing is going in the pot. Okay, there we go. There's one. Push that down in there. There's two. Okay, now that we get the spaghetti spoon, here it is, our noodle spoon, 
and push the rest of that down in there. Now we're going to take all the extra that fell around this clean stove top and just drop them right into that pot there. All right, now anything that's in the bag that is extra, not the label, only that. The noodles don't take very long to cook at all, so you've got to keep a good eye on those noodles. So if you want to, just do the noodles first and then let them sit there in that hot, hot water. So that way they'll just continue to cook or they'll continue to stay warm. Those noodles are just perfect for the consistency of chow mein, lo mein, any Chinese noodle. And they are the flour stick noodles. You can find them in any Asian market. And if you're unsure about what type to get, just ask around. Those ladies are very friendly that work over at the Asian market, and I'm sure they'd be friendly in your area too. But since I already knew what I was looking for, I just went right to it, grabbed it, put it right in the cart. And the beauty part of all, I have another bag right in there. So if this doesn't go around and this doesn't make the cut, I have one more bag. And it doesn't take very long to cook up. Okay, so while we are going to let that boil, so we are going to let these boil about five minutes, about four to five minutes, or until the consistency of tenderness that you like. You might want to leave them a little bit al dente, so that way they're easier to pick up with chopsticks. Because if they're too done, if they're too soft, you won't be able to pick these up with chopsticks if you like to eat with chopsticks. And they won't taste very well either if it's all mushy. So let's go ahead and test one of these. It's only been like a couple of minutes, but I just want to see how fast these things cook. And these Chinese noodles do not take long to cook at all. It's already sticky. Mm. Needs to be in there longer. Okay, we're going to turn that down. So yeah, about four to five minutes on these. And then we can just turn off the fire and let them sit in that hot, hot water until we're ready to serve. But those are some pretty damn good noodles, though. Okay, so we're going to let that... Gosh, is that going to be... It seems like it's remaining on high. I'm going to have to turn that out really low. Okay, in here we have three cups worth of rice, and we're going to serve our teriyaki chicken on top of the bed of rice. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to either take our squash and either put it into our chow mein, or we can put it amongst our chicken. I prefer to put it in the chow mein, and here's why. We're using a different sauce to make the chow mein. We're going to just do your standard stir-fry sauce. Otherwise, we have all these other sauces, and this is going to be for our chicken. And let's work on our vegetables first. First, our vegetables, we're going to get those into a bowl, then we're going to work on our chicken, get that into the wok. So here's what we're going to do with our chow mein vegetable. And we only have one wok to work with. So that means when we're done making our chicken, we're going to switch right over and throw the noodles and our, and our squash right in there and do the chow mein. But right now, let's just cut up our vegetable. And what you want to do with spaghetti squash, you want to just cut the end of it right off of there. Okay? You want to do the same thing with the other side. So that way, you're left with that. Now, you want to cut it down the middle. Be very careful. Actually, you want to cut it with the wider side down, so it gives you better leverage. So wide side down. Work the knife into the squash, being very careful, and then work it on down. Yeah. Okay, there's our spaghetti squash. Now, we're going to, just like a pumpkin, we're going to hollow this out, take out all the seeds to where we're just left with. Actually, no, a knife would be so much easier on this. I'm going to get a smaller knife. Let's get a smaller steak knife and just kind of go around the edge of that and just get rid of all of the veins and the seeds and get rid of it all. And you want this to be a fully hollowed out spaghetti squash. And you can use any kind of yellow squash you want. Just make sure you get all the seeds and crap out of there because you don't need it. And now we have a perfectly hollowed out spaghetti squash. Discard all the seeds and veins, you don't need them. 
and we sure as heck don't need them on anything else that we're going to be cutting on this cutting board. All right, for zucchini, do the same thing. Cut the tops and the bottoms off just like that. Discard those. And what we're going to do is cut them into about that thickness, about that thickness there. You want them thick. Zucchini is very delicate, very thin, and you want thick pieces of zucchini. Now we're going to cut them into quarters, in half and quarter. So just in quarters, just like that. Let's do that again, in half, quarter. Okay, now we're going to go for our squash. We're going to cut it in half, just like that. And then one more time. If it cuts like that, don't worry. Just makes it easier to cut the rest of it. Okay, now spaghetti squash is going to be much tougher than zucchini. So, it's going to cook for a lot longer. That's going to be much, much. Oops, and then, okay. That's all over our squash. Okay, so not knowing how the uh, the spaghetti squash, since it's harder and firmer, um, is going to fare against the zucchini, which is softer and doesn't take long to cook. So what we're going to probably do? Check on our noodles. Oh yes. Yep, those noodles are looking good. Okay. So what we're gonna use out of this bunch of celery is probably give me about five stalks of celery. We'll work with that first. And then let's start by showing you how we cut our celery down. First cut the tops, then cut the bottoms, about down to there, off of your celery so that you're left with this beautiful stock. And then at an angle we're going to cut lengthwise. There we go. Celery is now cut. This is going to be a very plentiful chow mein. Vegetable chow mein. Give these a mix. And we're going to put the rest of the celery back in its bag. Whew! Just got to squirt in the face. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do take our marinated chicken breast. As you can see, the marinade is nice and soaked in there really good. And now we're going to dice our chicken. Into about pieces about that size. to walk. And as you can see, we have a lot of chicken. Look at all that chicken in there, folks. That is a lot of chicken. Now, how much did that leave? Not much. Not much at all. Uh, let me get that extra bottle of teriyaki just in case that ain't enough. Okay, so with your extra bottle of marinade, just dump it right in. Perfect. All right. Okay. This is about as much as, much as we're going to need. Let's begin by getting out our sesame oil. What we're going to do is we're going to give this a little stir and then add our seasoning, or add our sesame oil off to the side there, kind of mix it in that way. That way everything coats together. I'm just going to prepare this a little bit by sliding some of this over. And we're going to pour the sesame oil right down in there. 
get it to the bottom there, because we should have gotten this first, but in case you forget, this is what we have to do. I'm just that's pretty good sesame oil. Okay. Let's just add that real quick, just a dollop, just like that. And we're gonna just push this aside, let that sesame oil kind of gather at the bottom there, and then slide that chicken over it. And as it heats up, it's gonna prevent our chicken from sticking to the bottom of our wok. some sesame action over this way. Okay. And we are going to cook our chicken until it's completely covered, or completely cooked, white and beautiful, delicious. Or it might not be white, it might be the color of teriyaki sauce. <laughs> and then I will show you the next step, which is probably going to be going after our ground ginger and adding a little bit of, well, actually we're going to be adding our, uh, all of this stuff we're going to be adding to this uh, when we mix everything together, but the only thing we're going to be using while we're cooking is our sauce base. So that has to be cooked, cannot be used raw. So any, anytime you're working with, um, with anything that has touched raw meat, do not use it raw. Use it cooked. That way you cook all the bacteria out of it, but do not use it raw. So if it calls for like half of the half of the marinade to come back into your meal, uh, make sure you cook it. Otherwise, get some fresh. <laughs> so now that we're starting to warm up here, let's mix our chicken around. Get it to stir a little bit, get that season or that uh, sesame oil to kind of circulate and circumvent through our chicken pieces. It already smells like a Chinese restaurant in here. This is something you really want to taste before you serve it because you want to make sure what you're serving is pleasing to at least you. You are the chef, so you know what tastes good, you know what it's supposed to taste like. So give it a taste before you serve it to make sure that everything, all these ingredients here, are in there as perfect as can be because it is easy to mess up, it's easy to throw off. The more ingredients you have, the easier it is to throw off. For instance, you might have too much sake, and to fix that, you might have to add more uh, uh, ginger or white truffle oil or something. There's always something. Maybe a little extra salt and pepper to flavor it up. Uh, maybe you've uh, not added enough marsala. You need to add a little bit more. Maybe a little less sake. Maybe a little more sake. Who knows? Who, a lot of people love their sake. Mm. Smells like teriyaki chicken to me but we're only just part of the way there. So, what do you say we add? Now, since this is a double dose, we're gonna use the whole thing. Although normally you would only use half of this stuff, but we're gonna use the entire bowl for the amount of chicken we got. So, we're gonna add all that. And then we are going to mix it with some of the juices in the chicken. I could not quite extract fully, so let's get this to coat our chicken pieces. So this is where the cooking back into our chicken process comes in, and the base of our sauce. Okay, so once your chicken pieces are fully coated, and our chicken is fully cooked, we still got a lot of that sauce down below, that's exactly what we want. Let's start off with, so five pounds worth of chicken, that's doubling up on the recipe quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. So this calls for a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, so we're just going to eyeball that to half because of the amount we have. It's going to go over all that chicken and make it flavorful, so about half a teaspoon. Actually, let me just take the shaker off because that's just holding a lot of that in. I'm just going to eyeball that to be about that. That's about it half a tablespoon, or half a teaspoon there actually, half a teaspoon, not tablespoon, teaspoon, teaspoon, half a teaspoon of ginger, but normally if you use one to two pounds of chicken, you're only going to need a quarter teaspoon of this stuff, but since we're working on double the, uh, double the size here, we're going to need double the ingredients, so that's about a half a teaspoon of ginger for this amount of chicken. Once you get that fully stirred in, 
and you can smell that ginger. You know, you've added just the right amount, not too much, to where it overwhelms the smell of teriyaki. The ginger is a very strong spice that you're going to be including. Our next ingredient, a little bit of ground mustard here we're going to be adding. So let's just add just a dash of ground mustard. So about Not there, maybe a quarter a teaspoon. Otherwise, just use a pinch. But for this, we're using a quarter teaspoon of ground mustard. Stir that in. Make sure you get all that coated in there nice and good, nice and well. Everything is mixing together nicely. Our next ingredient is going to be. Okay, hold yourselves, guys. A splash of Japanese sake. Since we're doubling up on the ingredients, that's one splash. That's two splashes of Japanese sake. Stir that in. Two splashes of Japanese sake. Woo, now that's some sake. Smell that sake. Our next ingredient is going to be a capful of seasoned rice vinegar. So since we're doubling up on the recipe, we're going to need two of these. This is going to be strong stuff too. It's one capful. Two of seasoned rice vinegar. Don't need that much. Because we've got plenty of sake going in there with our teriyaki marinade that we're cooking up. Along with our ground ginger, ground mustard. Definitely smell the vinegar. <laughs> oh yes. But that'll cook away. That strength of the vinegar will cook out. Just got to allow the sauce to thicken up and it takes a while to cook this stuff through to make it thicken. So rather than stir frying this, we are going to cook this on a lower heat, let the sauce thicken up, and but not until we add all our ingredients first. Let's get that truffle oil. And truffle oil will come in a little bottle like this, usually infused with olive oil. And this is white truffle oil. If it's, it's kind of pricey, but it is an essential in some fine dining experiences. So let's open up that truffle oil. Part off of there. Okay. And we are going to add a capful, no, two capfuls. Don't drop the cap in there. Of some good expensive <laughs> truffle oil. It's one capful of truffle oil. and two full capfuls of truffle oil. And this is pretty flavorful stuff too. Okay, mix that in. Now we're going to mix everything in once you add it, so that way everything will mix right into that sauce and we'll begin to build and thicken our sauce as long as we cook it. Oh, it's starting to smell good now, folks. Once you add that truffle oil, Mmm, let me take a whiff. Ooh, now that truffle oil just makes it taste oh so delicious. Oh, it makes a very nice flavor, that truffle oil. Okay, next ingredients. Let's get out the sweet soy sauce. The sweet soy sauce, as you know, is going to be thicker than traditional soy sauce, which is very thin and got a lot of sodium. Sweet soy is much sweeter, has less sodium, and we are going to add a, uh, a good dollop or two. So let's add two good dollops. That's one. Let's just add. So we're about going to add maybe about a quarter cup, or in this case, a half a cup, which is two good dollops of sweet soy. And I just eyeballed that. Mix that in. And that sweet soy is going to help thicken up our sauce, or it might help thin it out, I don't know, because everything else is pretty thin. Oh, and there goes my chicken. Don't, don't knock any chicken out. That's precious chicken we're knocking out of our wok. Don't want to do that. 
Boy, this stuff is really smelling great already, folks. Oh, oh, yes, just try this stuff, folks. You will not be sorry. This is a wonderful recipe, and it was discovered by not one, but two people. Another good part of cooking with alcohol, Marsala wine. Marsala is a cooking wine, and it's got this nice, rich, brownish color. So that's one capful of Marsala, two capfuls of Marsala wine, and just add one more for about a half more. So that's a pretty small cap, and we added a little bit more Marsala than we usually did. Okay, that's a good Marsala cooking wine. Stir that all in. Get a good aroma of that. Mixed with the truffle oil, the teriyaki sauce, the ground ginger, the ground mustard, the sake. All of that stuff. Just mmm, mmm, mmm. If only they invented smell of vision. Oh, I know. Okay, now the not so exciting parts salt and pepper to taste. So if you've got some ground peppercorns, get them in the grinder or put them in a pepper mill and you can have grind, ground, <laughs> grinded pepper in your next meal. Now some Himalayan pink salt, nothing better in the world for you than Himalayan pink salt. There we go. And that's to taste. No real measurement on that one, just add it to taste, whatever suits your fancy. Stir all of that in. Make sure it all gets mixed together because you don't want too much pepper in one bite, not enough pepper in another bite. So just stir all that together. Be very careful not to knock any chicken out of your wok. And wait for your sauce to start to thicken. It will start to thicken up because of the sugar that's in the teriyaki sauce mixed with all the other ingredients. It will help your sauce thicken the more it cooks. And the more it cooks, the more it coats. Like I said, this was stumbled upon by two people, myself being one of them, and my roommate at the time being another one. And we just bumped our heads together and said, what would go good in this teriyaki chicken? Because all we had was just the marinade. We had all those extra ingredients lying around. We didn't know what to put in there. So we decided, let's put this in. Hey, that's coming along. Let's put that in. Let's put this in. Pretty soon, we put in a whole bunch of ingredients like you've seen us do, and it turned out amazing. Now, to finally top it off and let it cook for a while. I'm going to add sesame seeds. Sesame, sesame. And we're going to add sesame to the top of these too, so I'm going to add too much. We're just going to mix that in so that way it will all have a nice sesame coating that will just thicken up right along with the sauce. And then for an appearance, we're going to add more sesame on top of that. And mm -mm, this is going to be superb. Oh, I can't wait to try. In fact, I should take a taste of this to see how well we're coming along. I remember that uh, sauce, that uh, teriyaki marinade, is now safe to eat because we cooked it. Be still my heart. Be still my beating heart. Oh. Wonderful. Mmm, that's simply exquisite. Oh, that's it. We're going to let this cook up for a while. I will let you know when it's time to come back and we're going to put it on top of our rice and we're going to put together our chicken chow, or not our chicken chow mein, our vegetable chow mein. We're going to combine our noodles with our vegetables there. We're going to cook it all up in the wok and then serve everything. Hopefully everybody is satisfied with what I can put together and I will show you what to do next after this. Okay, so the sauce is now thick enough to where we got a nice good coating on our chicken and as you can see it's gone from white to really, really beautiful brown. That means that that teriyaki sauce has cooked well into our chicken and we are ready to pull it off. And so we can get to ready to do our next bit. Before we do that, we're going to need this wok again, so let's go ahead and extract our chicken off to the side and we're going to use this pot to store our chicken and sauce and let it just sit there. And it'll be just fine we need this wok for our next recipe, which is vegetable chow mein. Our noodle. Put it right into the bowl so it catches all the drippings. Okay, now our, our uh, oil is starting to 
heat up there. So now let's grab our mixed vegetable, which is our squash, zucchini, celery. We're gonna get a good, go, a good uh, slab of that going. Probably about half a bowl, get it going, get it coated with the sesame oil. Now remember, I had to choose spaghetti squash because that's all the yellow squash they had and I needed something yellow for color, so I picked it up anyway. But yellow squash is always best to use with zucchini. Zucchini is the best squash to use for green squash. And yellow squash is the best yellow squash to use. It is actually called yellow squash. So once we got our vegetables going, go ahead and dump the rest of them in. And then we'll dump them back into the bowl after they're done cooking. And we'll get our noodles going. Then we'll drop the vegetable in little by little serving by serving until everybody has a good serving of both ingredients. So now our vegetable is getting coated really good with that sesame oil. And that's what we need. So let's turn up the heat to six or seven. Let's turn it up to seven actually. And get our ingredients really cooking. Uh, since our vegetables are raw, they need to reach a temperature suitable for cooking. So that way we'll have the same consistency and flavor and heat going through our meal instead of eating cold vegetables with warm noodles. They have to be the same temperature. So we're going to cook our vegetables first, get them up and cooking nice. And if you use spaghetti squash, the reason why they call it spaghetti squash is because the pieces will flake up like spaghetti noodles like this over here which is why I tried to avoid using spaghetti squash but it's all they had so I picked it up but basically try to find the yellow squash so these have to thaw out naturally these, uh, these uh, pot stickers so that they'll be uh, thawed enough and then everything in the middle will be thawed out and then we just throw them in a little sesame oil and cook them on one side serve them with a little bit of this dumpling sauce and It'll be a Chinese meal fit for a king. Okay, let me try out the consistency of one of these. Perfect. Okay, you guys go into your bowl. That's all there is to it. Okay, and now let's go with some of our noodle. So, at least this will be ready enough now. Drop down, down there, drop another spoonful there. Another spoonful. Okay, that's perfect consistency. Now get your vegetable. Add about a third of the vegetable. Two spoons, we're going to do this. Mix it all together. Then we're going to reach for our stir-fry sauce. Okay. Give it a little flip. so much easier to pick up the chopsticks and it makes it a little sticky. So what you want to do is lay down your rice, grab a spoon, and grab some of that chicken with the sauce in it, and right over on top of the rice. Just like that. And then top it with a little shaker sesame seeds for appearance. Okay. There 
there you have it. Chow mein and chicken teriyaki done, Sonic Blue style. Now, how are we going to do our pot stickers? We are going to need sesame oil. Uh, before we put the sesame oil in there, let's give that a dry. Water, water and oil do not mix, folks, especially hot water and hot oil. I should say hot oil and water do not mix. So make sure your block is completely and utterly dry. All right, now we can add the sesame oil. There's just a little bit left. Okay, cut the bottom of it. A little more for excess. Yeah, it's popping. Okay, so what you want to do is flat side down, flat side down, flat side down on your pot stickers, flat side down. And then we're going to hopefully cut these completely. And hopefully they won't still be frozen by the time they're done. Kind of pull these out of the freezer a little too late. We're going to work with this as best as we can, but the only secret to make these hot stickers start off with a flat side down. Be careful of popping oil. Flat side down. We're going to start with this amount here. Okay. Let that cook for a bit. Get these hot stickers cooking on both sides. Make sure they are not frozen. That one's coming along really well. Look at that. Flip them over. That one's coming along. That one's coming along. That one is perfect. Usually, if they're thawed, hot stickers don't really take very long to cook at all. In fact, that would pretty much be the perfect time to cook them, but they did start out a little frozen. So we need to cook them and thaw them at the same time, which may may ruin the consistency of them, but please make sure before you cook hot stickers, make sure they're thawed completely. But unfortunately, there's no real way to thaw them, but natural thawing. You don't want to put them in water and speed thaw them. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure they are thawed naturally, which means we are going to cook the heck out of these to make sure they're not frozen when we serve them. We don't want to serve everything all together, and these are still frozen. Hopefully, they're not frozen anymore. Now, I'm going to gather up our dumplings right into there, right into there. I'm just going to dip just a little bit over that. It's going to be very thin, so there we go. And maybe just dabble it on there a little bit as you go. Let's do us a taste test. So we have our dumplings, we have our chow mein, vegetable chow mein. We got our teriyaki chicken over a bed of rice. Let's give it a taste test to see how well we come along. First, the teriyaki chicken with sesame seeds. Magnificent. Try it with some rice. No. The rice could use a little more water. Could use a lot more water. Let's try the uh, vegetable chow mein. Mmm. Noodles came out good. Trying to get all the pieces together, but that turned out pretty good too. But more naturally, more me like me, don't ever be afraid to add the sweet soy on top. Of any of these dishes. In fact, you know, I'm going to do the same to that. I like sweet soy. I'm going to have sweet soy on there too. You need that on the rice. Everything. Everything gets sweet soy. I love this stuff. So, that's about it from uh, the Kitchen of Cooking with Sun and Blue. We made a lot of food tonight, and hopefully, they turn out just as good in your kitchen as they did in ours. So, remember, if you're not cooking good, you're not eating good. 
sweet, so it really perks it up. Mm. Very good. And hopefully it'll be very good for you too. back in. Over our chicken. Over the chicken. Across the sea. There's a meal awaiting for me. <laughs> and don't drop the ginger on the floor, please. A good dollop over here. No, that's not a good dollop. Come on, good dollop. There we go. Come on. Come on out of there. There we go. Come on out of there, dollop. I know you're in there. Now that was rude. How could I burp on my own show? <laughs> you do it all the time. So... You do it all the time. 